Hey everyone. So on the first video, we created a Kotlin project. We're gonna do the same thing here. I'm working on a Kata, and to do so, I need to learn how to create a Kotlin project. There are many ways to do that with, uh, with IntelliJ and with the command line. So we're gonna do pretty much the same thing we did in the first video, except we're gonna choose a different option in Gradle and Knit this time. So if we go to a new project in IntelliJ, and again, Kotlin is a language that was uh, created by JetBrains, which are the makers of IntelliJ. If we go to Java, we can select Kotlin JVM. Notice there's also a Gradle project type over here. We're not gonna go that route this video because that will uh, make IntelliJ create all the Gradle, stu Gradle stuff for you. This time I wanna go bare bones and I just wanna give it the Kotlin JVM. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the Gradle stuff ourselves via the command command line. So I'm gonna click next. I'm gonna give it a project name and for Mercata, hit finish. It's not gonna do much. Pretty much all it does is add the Java uh, Kotlin runtime. Up here, we don't really have anything to work with very much yet. We don't have Gradle. We don't even have a, a good folder structure yet. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna run Gradle init, which will do all that for us. Normally, if you went the other route and chose Gradle project type in IntelliJ, it would pretty much do this part for you. But I ran into some issues. Um, uh, hopefully in the next video when we do actually go that route, that will go smoothly. But this time I'm gonna, I kinda like to do stuff manually anyways. I kinda like to keep things simple. So we're gonna do Gradle on knit. And it gives you some options of the type of products, products you wanna create. I don't need a Kotlin application project. I just need a Kotlin library project because we're doing a Kata, right? So last time we chose number eight. This time we're gonna choose number nine and see what it does for us. We want a Kotlin DSL, which means when it creates our um, our Kotlin uh, build script, which is the gradle.build file, we want it to be a Kotlin gradle.build file. So it's got Kotlin syntax in it. So I'm gonna check number two. And I'm gonna create the project name, which is already there, keep it the same. I'm gonna use the project name as the package name. So I'll hit enter, keep that the same. Now, notice a few things up here. It creates a bunch of Gradle uh, scaffolding for you, as well as the Gradle build file, which has the extension KTS, which means it's a Kotlin Gradle build file syntax, um, which also gives you some nice ideas. Uh, rather than have the standard Gradle build, you'll have to look those up. I don't know if they are offhand, but there are some nice things it does for you. Um, but for now, I don't care. We just want to get this built. Uh, and also notice that uh, it creates a new folder structure for you. So this is basically kind of like the Java folder structure. If you go all the way down in here, you'll eventually get to the, the class that it creates for you, which is just a generic name right now. It also creates a test for that class, example test. And again, that's just the generic test. So what I like to do is to make sure this is running, uh, see if we can run a test. Well, right now, we can't run a test. Usually in IntelliJ, you'll see like an arrow that allows you to run the test here, or you could uh, run it from the command line. I know that's not gonna work right now because it doesn't show up. And that's because IntelliJ does not know about the Gradle stuff we just added. IntelliJ just created a project here, but doesn't really know about the build Gradle yet. So we're gonna tell IntelliJ that it exists and say, hey, it's there. So the, the way I do that is I right click to build Gradle and go to import Gradle project which brings up a dialog and I just select okay, which behind the scenes does some magic and somehow links your Gradle build file to your IntelliJ project. I don't know how it does it, but creates some, some files and settings and config files somewhere, does some magic. And then if you click okay, you'll notice that it will run a build for you. It notices your Gradle build files there, runs the build. It also creates the new Gradle tab over here. So the reason this tab is created because IntelliJ knows about your build file and so that means you can go in here and run build tasks. You can run those build tasks from the command line. Um, there's different ways to run these same Gradle build tasks, but at least it knows about it, gives you this, this pane here if you want to use it. Um, and we've just built our project. Now, if we go back to our test, we notice that we can actually run our test now, which is good. So I like to change the syntax, which is nice about Kotlin versus say Java is with Java, you have to write your test name like this or put underscores in here. I like to use just a plain string. So what's nice about Kotlin is I can do this. I can change this to just be a sentence. So I can say some test, just like that, right? 
It's a lot nicer syntax. You have a lot more freedom. It's a lot more readable to me. So let's see if we can run this. We can. The weird thing is it should show me the test name, some test down here. Uh, I'm not sure why. Every time I do this in IntelliJ, it doesn't show me. I don't know if I have to. I usually have to restart the first time. I'm not sure if there's a trick to get this to to show up. But if I restart and run this again, it does. Um, I don't know. Let's restart it. It's kind of weird, but let's restart it. And then we'll run that test again, and we'll notice that in the test runner, we will actually see some tests this time. And then from there on out, it'll be fine. So, let's go ahead and run this. And notice up here, it's creating, it, it creates a config for you. So when you click run here, it creates a test config here. So if you ever want to tweak it or the way it runs it, you can go in here and you can edit that configuration. So here we go, some test. If you go in here, you can see exactly how that wired up and ran that test, how IntelliJ is uh, finding things and running that test. And that's it. So we've got a new project based on Kotlin. It's very bare bones. We used Gradle init to add the Gradle stuff. And then we told IntelliJ about the Gradle stuff we added and now we're ready to rock and roll and to write Arcata.